Welcome back everyone to National Sportswear's Corel Draw 9 uh, or 10 or 8 or 7 or 6. Uh, my name is Duncan Benedict. I'll be giving the tutorial. Um, welcome to everyone who's new. Welcome to the ones who watched the earlier versions. If you're new, um, at this point I probably should mention you should go watch at least 2 and 3, but 1, 2 and 3 would be good. Um, before you watch this one just so that you can get caught up. Um, another thing I'm going to point out uh, for anyone who's watching our videos on YouTube or other places like Flickr, um, you might want to visit our website nationalsportswear.com and go to the tutorial section, look up Corel Draw and watch the tutorials there or at least watch the um, added tutorials because what I've done is I've added some smaller broken down versions where we're going to have like for instance lesson 2a, lesson 2b, lesson 3a, b and c and those are small bits and pieces that I left out intentionally uh, because the purpose of these videos was to get you through fast and learning Corel Draw on a professional level and then the other portions I left out were added things that um, are very important but not for this particular tutorial so you might want to go watch those they're they're handy um, I would go through a lot of the lessons and then maybe backtrack to those A, B's and C's so that's how I'm laying this out uh, so let's get into it uh, for all the people who've returned let's start um, you can go to file we're going to open up the last one we saved um, I'm in the wrong folder you're in lesson folder 3 um, lesson 3. So let's open that folder up, go to that file, lesson 3 uh, in folder 3 and click open and here it is. And there's our cute little puppy dog. So what we're going to do in this version again is we're going to now teach you my secret. We're going to embed this into the background. So the first thing we want to do is you can just click off the image for a second to get rid of those handles. So click over here um, off the workspace and if you go about four tools down, hopefully that's where it is on yours, we're going to be looking for the rectangle tool, which is also your F6 key, but let's stick to using the, the mouse. Um, click that tool and then bring your, your cursor is going to turn with a little crosshair and a rectangle. That's to let you know that's what tool you're using. Go to the very top corner of your workspace, okay, in that very top left corner click hold the mouse down and drag that down. It's a similar process you use when you brought in the bitmap um, where you had the rubber band and you know it, it shows the scaling uh, slightly different icon this time but you're gonna drag it down to the bottom right corner um, and there you have it. Now once that happens now we get to use our color tool. You see everything is becoming a little more fun now. More tools and little things we get to play with. So let's go over to our color tool. It doesn't matter if you click off that or not, but just go over to, it, it actually does. Don't leave, make sure the handles are still there. Go to the white. You're going to see the cursor changes to another cursor. Click on white and that rectangle changed to white. Now go up to your pick tool, which is the very top one. Click on it. And what we want to do is a couple things. We need to get rid of the outline. So first thing we're going to do is go way down here where you see no outline. You see a thin line, hair line, half point. Remember I discussed points and picas. Well, points are also your, your dimensional measurements for the thickness of line. So we're going to look for the one that's a rectangle with an X that's no outline and click it. Okay. What you've done is remove the outline around that box because we really don't want it. The next step is you're going to go up to arrange and go down to where it says order and you need to send that to the back so you can either go back one or to the back I have a habit of just going to back so arrange order scroll over with your mouse and look to back and choose back now what you've done is you've put that white image I'll let's see we'll click it yellow just so you can see what's going on here we'll, we'll make it yellow now this yellow represents your rectangle in the back that's the size of your area and your bitmap of your puppy up front. Now we could do a couple things if you're building multiple images here. Um, right now I'm just teaching you the fundamentals of embedding the puppy on the onto your workspace. But if you're doing a lot of things you can take bitmaps, put one down here, put another one here, do a little bit of wording, whatever you want and you can just kind of build you know, your basic what you're kind of looking for. Um, so this is a great building idea of building up your canvas and I honestly hate using the word canvas because 
canvas is representative painting which is pixels and it should be used only in programs like Adobe Photoshop and, and, and Corel Photo Paint. Um, in Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator I like to use workspace as a, a more uh, proper term. So um, click on your square again down in the bottom right corner you can always tell when you've clicked on something that what you're clicking on because this square represents the yellow is telling you that's what you're clicking. If I click the bitmap it says color bitmap on layer one in the center nothing down there so click the yellow go over to your um, color uh, box over here choose white make it white now click off the um, image now you're gonna drag so click your mouse on the very top corner somewhere and just drag it to select everything so you're clicking way up here you're dragging way down here off your workspace and everything in there is gonna select all the other method is clicking um, edit and going down and look for the word select all and you can say select all objects that does the exact same thing now for at this point what we're going to do is while they're all selected we're going to go to our export button which is right here you can go file and choose export or you can choose the little button beside the import and that's the export or you can choose control E whichever is your preference I like to use these quick reference button. So click the ex the export. You're going to look for um, your lesson four folder and oh actually you haven't even created a lesson four so hang on let's cancel out of there for a second. Go file do a save as okay forget the save we're going to do save as and then what you want to do is you want to go up create a folder that says lesson four double click it then go in and choose uh, you know, go in and type in the word lesson4.cdr. This is going to get you in the habit of creating your lessons as we progress. So hit save um, and you should have that folder save. Once you've done that, go back to your export or control E, select that button, and then you're going to export it as the lesson4 bitmap because once you saved it, it's going to give you that default. Okay. And if you don't see bitmap, this middle drop down you can just choose that and go look for bitmap and just look for Windows bitmap is good enough okay select export now the key here is we want to save it um, this drop down color you can put it at RGB 24 if you like the size you might have you know this or you might have 800 by 600 um, everyone's computer is going to say something different but what you want to have is one to one ratio ignore these just go to one-to-one -one ratio and on your resolution the trick here is you'll have multiple choices if you put 300 if you look down here on the left corner it's gonna say 38 megabytes that's ridiculous nothing needs to be 38 megabytes um, so what you're gonna do is choose 96 DPI and that's gonna be about three to four megabytes the reason we're doing 96 is that is the key secret DPI for this to work. If you use 72, it's not going to work. If you use 150, it's not going to work. Just use 96 and you will see why. Um, hit OK and it will have imported to that file. The next is you're going to go to layout, go down to page setup. In your page setup, you're going to see a window that says workspace document global. Choose the plus symbol beside document, then you're going to see general page guidelines and publish to internet what you want to look for is the page under page you're gonna to go to background choose the background and in this gray window you're gonna have three choices at the top three radio buttons no background solid background where you can choose the color or bitmap choose the bitmap and then click the browse button from the browse button you want to go up and look for a lesson for your folder look for your lesson for bitmap hit open and then after you chose the open go down and hit OK and then what we're going to do is take this bitmap you have just move it to the side or you can delete it move it to the side if you like take your white background move it to the side or hit delete hit this bitmap delete and there you have it you've got your little dog he's embedded in the background no matter what you do you cannot select him this is the secret to making incredible artwork in Corel Draw without having headaches, aggravations, and all these things. So now that you're in this, um, I would go File and choose 
save as or actually cancel out of there I'm sorry go file and just click save and now your um, lesson four has been saved so just as a guarantee let's do this you choose your close button not the red one the small one close out of there go to file go to open go to your lesson four look for your lesson four CD CDR file choose open and there you have it you've got a 12 inch by 12 inch embedded bitmap on the background that you cannot select um, and this is going to be the end of that lesson on embedding uh, I will see you in lesson five and in lesson five we're going to go over the Bezier tool and I'm going to teach you how to start drawing this without the aggravation of bitmaps moving around. Thanks for watching and I will see you in lesson five. Bye for now.